<laughs> and we're here for the closing event of March and Kosla's solo exhibition on the Marine. And tonight we're going to find out exactly what Marine Corps are on. <laughs> <laughs> or about to get off. Anyway, to my left is Mr. Martin Kosla, and I hope during the, um, the talk tonight the camera can pan around and show our viewers that are all over the world tonight um, some of the lovely artworks that are both sculptures and these strange things on the walls. We don't want to call them paintings because maybe you'll get into some talk about that because they're not really anything that's been defined before. Um, and if I may welcome our guest all from the United States of America. Don't, we won't hold that against no. you, of course. Uh, Mr. Sean Anderson is here um, to engage with Mr. Kosla about the ideas. And um, as a brief introduction, Mr. Sean Anderson is the Associate Professor of the Undergraduate Program and the Director of the College of Art, Architecture, and Planning at Cornell University, which is located in Ithaca, New York, mm. a couple hours north of New York City. Not where they shot from, um, nothing to do with South University. No. Um, and formerly, Mr. Anderson was the associate curator in the Department of Architecture at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. So this is, uh, is that right? Yeah. The, so this is a subject he knows something about. And with uh, much to do, I, uh, I, I think you gentlemen have some, I didn't bring any questions, or we'll you, just. You can sit. No, 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 we'll just take it, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Peter. And thank you, Nature Mort, and thank you, Martin. And I also have to thank Dianita Singh for uh, putting us in conversation, not only tonight, for tonight, but also uh, beforehand mm. as well. So it's my great pleasure to be back in India, back in Delhi, a place that I know fairly well, but um, the world is changing always. And uh, your work uh, speaks to that, uh, especially when we look at the arc uh, of, of your work that has brought us here tonight. And uh, I think our conversation, as, as our previous conversations have gone, will range anywhere from the works that we see here on the floor and on the walls, but also to questions of value, questions of, of social justice, questions of the ground upon which we stand and sit today. So it's my really great pleasure uh, to be here with you, you and to realize also that we have and share so many intersections uh, in this small world. Even in this room, I would say, we have many intersections. So it's great. So um, we're supposed to have a conversation tonight. And for our viewers uh, on the screens, um, I know that there will be images of, of the gallery space that shows primarily the, the, the three-dimensional works, but the works on the walls, too, we will be referencing and thinking about uh, this evening. So I wanted, though, to begin with kind of broad set of questions, because even uh, when we were talking uh, earlier, this question of an architect who makes art or an artist who makes architecture, mm -hmm. it happens, uh, is a relatively unique phenomenon in the sense that we generally talk about art as a kind of holistic, large scale market and enterprise and even business. Right, Peter? It's business. Uh, uh, no. Uh, but we don't generally think of architecture in that, in that way. And uh, I know that there have been questions posed to both architects and artists uh, around notions of what the difference might be. Mm -hmm. I'm not really interested in the difference, though. And because we are surrounded by a collection of work, of recent work of yours, I was going to start this conversation by asking for you, for you, what is art? And how, what is art, the art that you are making in relationship to the architecture that you also make, think about, and produce? Right. Um, so this is, this is a question in, in its sort of various forms has been asked to me over the last decade. So, um, and, and usually 
many conversations begin with this. So uh, I suppose it's, it's a good place to start mm. uh, because I see at least, so I'll start with kind of trying to talk about my own practice and then perhaps I can try and um, sort of hazard some guesses and ideas at, at larger contexts of what sort of cities and art and, and what their sort of value uh, could be. So for me, I think that, that first of all, they're, they're two very distinct practices uh, which um, have their own um, journeys and their own uh, searches and their own materials um, and their own, own formal languages and, and obviously sort of their own sort of inherent struggles with them. So it's not um, not that one is a refuge from the other, mm. in a sense, but mm. it is, they exist parallelly and, you know, because the creative processes overlap in, in a sense, uh, there's, I, I, I think of them as, as, as constantly in, in the two forms of, of my practice to be constantly um, in, an, in an argumentative um, friendly conversation uh, <laughs> and occasionally an argumentative kind of relationship with each other. So they inform each other, definitely, uh, intellectually and um, conceptually, because both of them share one common ground, which is, which is the city as a, as a space for practicing. I mean, um, the architecture allows for uh, me to, my architectural practice uh, engages with the city in a particular way through a more traditional understanding of, of architecture, which is that to, you, you build buildings and, and, mm -hmm. and, and the process of, of you know, digging and constructing. And, um, and, and I think that the art allows for questions that, that perhaps architecture is uh, limited to, to ask in certain ways mm -hmm. uh, of it. Uh, so I think that they, they are, um, someone said they're, they're sort of bedfellows, but, but independent. Mm. Uh, I think they're the in separate single beds too. Separate often. single beds. We I need think, to bring yes, them together. But, but sometimes they, yeah. they, they come together, as I said. So it's yeah. a conversation or an argument, depending on you know where where they are. So so that's that's the kind of, in a sense that's the nature of the practice. I think materially they they borrow from each other very much. I think a lot of my art practice is is uh, uses construction materials so from the early days, brick, concrete, steel, and wood even up to now remain very mm. central to, to as forms of expression uh, within uh, the, the sculptural practice. Uh, so I think that those links are deliberate, uh, but also I think that they allow for, for new readings in materials that, you know, perhaps traditional, uh, if I'd gone to an art school, it perhaps would, I would have had different readings of materials. So mm. I think that I, I use that um, in some way. But I think moving from there, I think talking about ideas of, I mean, we were talking earlier about cities and, and the architecture and, and, and the value of architecture within city and the value of art within a city. And I think that's mm -hmm. a really interesting conversation. And I think mm -hmm. as we, we drove, uh, we were kind of pointing to, to different scenarios where, you know, value within architecture within a city. And, and there is, of course, the, the underlying economy of, of architecture. And I, mm -hmm. I think that that's, that's, uh, that's the dominant conversation, but in its realization within our cities, what you what you see are uh, is is in in some senses a, a deliberate and accidental urbanism um, in a sense. So you you create like a overbridge, and in a sense, it creates a shelter for some form of a smaller economic activity under it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, uh, that's an interesting value that architecture creates accidentally, or how perhaps infrastructure creates shelter. Or, so I think that in a city like Delhi, which is so much about boundaries and barriers and, and, and walls and fences and, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, the barbed wire, the, the, the really vicious fences, um, it's, it's a place where kind of architecture almost very deliberately excludes the city from from its boundaries, and so it spills out onto mm -hmm. onto common on, onto common grounds, and and there mm -hmm. it sort of flourishes um, and creates new relationships, the unexpected ones, from what, for instance, planners when they're designing cities mm -hmm. uh, do. Um, art, in some senses, to a great degree, 
unfortunately retreats into kind of white cube spaces, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and those conversations sort of move into more rarefied environments, whereas, you know, in, in a sense, you want the city and the art to almost do, do completely the opposite. You want the art kind of, kind of moving out in, into the urban space. Mm -hmm. And you want the architecture to lift the barriers to kind of create sort of, you know, new, new ways and new forms of engagement, planned or unplanned. So right. I think that those are kind of interesting um, thoughts to sort of explore, I think. Absolutely. In practice. I think you, you started to answer questions that I was already um, imagining, but uh, you used the word very early on, journeys, in a way, and journeys tend to have narratives that have beginnings, middles, and ends, maybe. Um, and so I was curious about what brought you to the, the, the work that you're doing now, and maybe, in a sense, what was the journey that, uh, that you decided, I would mm -hmm. assume you decided that the making of an artwork versus the making of an, a work of architecture, meaning, say, a drawing or, or a model or, or so forth, the conventional forms of representation. What brought you to that point where you could say, and as, as you've described, I want to produce a work of art mm -hmm. that is in response to or an extension of uh, my architectural practice. Was there any moment where you felt like that, that art was, in a sense, extending what you couldn't do uh, in the architectural world? Mm. Um, I think, you know, I probably look at, at cities, at, at, you know, you can look at cities at two, two separate levels. I mean, you can look at it in several separate ways, but one way I think of looking at it is, as I think how master planners do in a traditional sense, is that city as objects, so city as an object, or series of objects, or, uh, but another becomes uh, city as systems, mm. which kind of I think is is about the, the well. There are systems that are that are structured systems, and then there are s the undefined systems. And we spoke briefly about that yesterday, and we perhaps could go back to that mm. later as well. But I think that if you look at cities as systems, as as conversations, as journeys for people, and and the the unplanned connections between amongst amongst people and communities within neighborhoods, uh, mm -hmm. then perhaps I think I would quite clearly sort of say that I think the architecture practice for me uh, interacts with the city as city as object very clearly, whereas uh, mm -hmm. that never completed a, a reading of a city for me ever. Uh, and I think that for me to really understand cities, if I didn't understand the systems, if I didn't understand the the, the, the non-sort of articulated aspects of the city, and you see so much of that in South, in, in, in South Asia, and I mm -hmm. imagine only from reading but not from experience in the global south, the, the idea of city as, as the unarticulated uh, you know, uh, systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I think in that sense, the art is very much talking to the city of the systems, and the architecture is the city to the, of the object, in a mm. sense. Uh, mm. And maybe only th when those two combine do I sort of start to you know, get a sense of a reading of what, where I live and the space I occupy and, um, and those who I share it with, mm -hmm. the other citizens. So in, in, in some sense it's that and, yeah. You know, so it's, I like this idea that an artwork then can be the, the articulation, to use your word, or the, the, the coalescing of system, systemic thought, systemic processes, but also the unplanned and the invisible or the uh, in-between, right? And so I, I find that the work, uh, especially your, I'm going to call them drawings, by the way, Peter. I find them to be uh, drawings, uh, but uh, the drawings to me start to speak to that exactly, that they are as much formal explorations as they are systemic explorations hmm. and, and in a way visualizing the possible. Um, and so when I think of the city or when I think of urban space in, in South Asia in particular, when you're describing this kind of layering of walls, of, of surfaces, of conditions, of scales, which is what we can also talk about, 
I, I start to wonder then how art fits into that. We could argue that art is actually present within all of that in various ways. Mm -hmm. We could also say that when art does retreat into the white cube, we are allowed to see it without distraction. We are allowed to understand it with, within the context of other artworks. And when it's in an institution, then it, it gains a kind of um, uh, value system, uh, if you will. So you were talking about value. We were talking about value earlier. And it was, it was based on a remark that someone said to me fairly recently that architecture uh, doesn't have value but art does because it's a commodity or it's, it's a form of, of selling, it has a, it has a producer, uh, it is sold in a gallery, but architecture to some degree is also sold, but it's occupied, it's um, used uh, in a way. Mm -hmm. And so uh, all of this is to, to, to think about and respond to this idea then of, of systemic maybe devaluation Mm -hmm. especially in your early work from, say, 2010 to 2015 uh, as well. Um, and I was going to ask you if you could talk a little bit about that work, especially, say, the work with brick dust mm -hmm. um, and, and how perhaps that, those works start to inform what we see here today. So I think um, the earlier works... I mean, the short answer would be that the earlier works were looking more at, at labor, um, social justice, um, laws, um, and, and the individual. Mm. And so they, the, the, the individual person working on a construction site or their rights and their place within society was sort of very much um, the starting point of, of, of uh, my own sort of artistic journey in a mm. sense uh, because that was something that I was coming in contact with um, on a very regular basis as I was trying to kind of mm. make sense of, of uh, what, I, what, what role I play with, within the city as, an archi as a practicing architect mm. and then moving on from there. So in a sense that from there it sort of moved on to this idea of where the brick dust came in and it was about materiality and kind of seeing a seamless sort of um, movement between object and object maker mm -hmm. uh, and in some senses it was kind of like perhaps looking at kind of like a reverse archaeology or maybe just archaeology where I think the first series of works was more about the individual and sedimentation so it was about like layers of, of you know uh, material that that uh, cumulatively, cumulatively begin to cover areas, cities, lives, mm -hmm. um, and um, in some sense it moved from the individual to, to this sort of layering of materiality, um, whereas kind of I think the more recent works in, in conceptually sort of zoom out mm -hmm. and, and from a layering they in a sense start to look at cities as systems and, and the idea of uh, uh, the idea of collectives, uh, mm. number of collectives, larger groups, but also the idea of balance, I think, somewhere. And it's mm. like how does, you know, their, in the earlier work, while I, was, I would look at sort of individual and their relationship to the system, now I think I'm kind of interested in looking at how this, how this whole thing just holds together. And it just about does. And mm. it's always just about does. Right, right. You know, b b before it sort of, you know. Is that the brink? That is the brink, in a sense. All right. Really, it is. It is just that. So it kind of just, you know, uh, the city's, uh, right. you know, forever these conversations. I mean, for the last three or four decades, this idea of, you know, the collapse of the city, and then it sort of reemerges, and it has mm -hmm. new ways of, kind of resurrecting itself and remaking itself, and, and there's a great deal of violence in, in that process. Uh, there's a, there's, uh, there's that, but there's also a great deal of sort of, you know. Uh, support and community and, mm -hmm. and, and other aspects that come in and kind of just hold it together. So I think that in that sense, it's, it, it's looking at a larger, at, at zooming out and looking at a larger scale at systems that hold things together. Hmm. Uh, I like, I, to me, I think the early work too starts to 
articulate, to use your word, um, w uh, a way of representing that um, maybe that there is a systemic care, mm. but also to me it started to speak to authorship. And the author of an architecture, or architectures, say, plural, are often the people that we don't speak of, that we don't see, that are, uh, are working on a construction site, for instance, and then go away after, uh, after a building is complete. And yet, they are the ones who have perhaps the most intimate knowledge mm. of any structure. And uh, I know in particular in the South Asian uh, sphere, often construction workers live on the site as much as they do come, come to the site, right? Um, and so what, what drew me to your earlier works were the portraits uh, in brick dust, right? So we, we could argue that um, we are all covered in that brick dust. We are all this unnamed person or author uh, uh, of an architecture that is constantly being built or of a city that's constantly being built because you use in those early works kind of paradigmatic house, right? A pit, pitched roof and a, and a cube and, and, and so forth, which is kind of the archetype. And then you move away from that archetype to look at what uh, I, I look over here on the walls and they're systemic, yes, but they are stellar in a sense. They, they are stalactite or, or star-like uh, mm. cosmic spaces um, that are explosive and implosive uh, at the same time. And so I, I am thinking of, of the city uh, in that way, that it is constantly imploding and exploding at the same time, and Delhi in particular, uh, if not if not other cities on, on the subcontinent are constantly in this uh, say field of production of constant kind of uh, uh, conflict between this authorship and the who who produces mm -hmm. an architecture and so to me I think when I look at your work, I know it is yours that you are producing this work. You are imagining it. You're designing it. You're, we were talking about the process that Martin goes through to, to create a work that it's very process oriented, yeah. right, more or less. And uh, that's an architectural way of approaching art. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also the intuition, right, the, 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 the thing that we can't control the aspect of art production that happens when we kind of leave it and, and uh, look the other way, for instance. So to me, I, I find um, that the scale of the work that you're thinking about is then not only the kind of macro city scale, but this, this very intimate interior scale. And so I wanted to talk about than the interiority of your work. Okay. If, we're, if we begin with this broad kind of perspective of systems, and systems of connectivities, of ideas, of histories, of narratives that are intersecting with each other in unusual ways. When I look at this large work that's right beside you, uh, and, and others, we start to see features that are perhaps domestic or domesticated, mm -hmm. but we don't necessarily see them as window, as door, as chair, as shelf necessarily. I could think of them as thresholds, for instance. And I'm wondering then for you, what are these thresholds and what meaning do they what meaning do they have for you? Because they, they appear at different times in your work as yeah. well. I'm going to put a pin on one, po one, one point that you mentioned so we can come back to it. Which okay. is I think about authorship and labor in architecture. And I mm -hmm. wonder whether that plays to an earlier, earlier sort of point you were making about value in architecture. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this idea of, of the maker, uh, the maker, the artist, and mm -hmm. the maker, the mason, 
uh, wh what role they play in that conversation yeah. about value in architecture yeah. uh, and its interchangeability, I think, um, yeah. which sort of my mind just, my mind went to it. Where is that? <laughs> thinking for a second that, oh, that's interesting. And then perhaps there are sort of conversations also that to be had about, uh, you know, sustainability and about the idea of actually when architecture becomes kind of, you know, mm. exchangeable, what sort of potentials mm. does it does it open up? But that's, that's something that perhaps we could speak on. Well, I mean, if, if, you know. yeah, because we can talk about this. Yeah, uh, yeah, chat, but it's but, a but conversation. It's, so but we can exactly, meander, right? So we're going to meander. Yeah. Because I would argue that the photographs that you've commissioned or you've taken, I'm not sure which, yeah. of your completed buildings, mm. always with foregrounded by the actual context. Yeah, I think that starts to speak yeah, to yeah, what you're yeah, describing, absolutely. right? Because it's not necessarily about seeing your building and it's not necessarily about seeing the, the say, slum context that foregrounds that mm. building. But you've set up uh, in a number of photographs, early photographs of completed works, uh, especially the Volvo, I think it's the Volvo factory. Yeah. Yeah. The Volvo factory is seen in the context of, yeah. of the city, but also of people. Yeah. And, and to me, that's astonishing because it also confronts the kind of modernist legacy of who produces architecture, who lives in cities, mm. who occupies the space around yeah. these buildings, especially in, in South Asia, but in the global south generally. So yeah, let's let's talk about yeah. that because I think it has something to do very much with these thresholds as I well. I totally agree with you. I think I mean I think that was a really important point of my sort of departure uh, or not departure, sort of my sort of beginning of the art practice, because I I think that there was this moment where where architecture uh, is become so the way you photograph architecture, mm. the way it's represented, has uh, you know over the last twenty years is it's, it's Instagram and it's you know the websites of you know various art dailies and kind of you know cool websites with with sexy images and blue skies and you know. Um, and it was just not making sense because w what we were doing as architects and because most of these images were commissioned by us as authors of those buildings, uh -huh. we ourselves were kind of uh, active participants in fetishizing the object without sort of kind of really looking at, at yep. where that object is situated, what relationship it has to its surroundings, immediate and sort of, you know, slightly further out. So I think the, uh, for me it was very important and I, I, I think I started doing it just initially on my own and then when we'd get a photographer in it was a very important part of saying mm -hmm. that look here's a building and it may be super high tech or it may be a, 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 a primary healthcare center like um, I'd, I'd shown you one yesterday mm -hmm. but the, to, 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 to photograph it within the context was so important because I think that it, it really then brought into question that went way beyond the form of the architecture and what that architecture held. And I think that's really the true value of, of what we're doing. Mm. Uh, like if you kind of like bleach that out or kind of, you know, crop it erase out or Photoshop it, it or, yeah. or, or, or erase it, absolutely. Yeah. So I think that, that, that was definitely, and it continues to be a very, very um, deliberate uh, way of imaging uh, my own work, um, mm -hmm. the architectural uh, work. Um, and so I think, yeah, I think that's important. And then from there, the ideas of threshold, I mean, I'm now going to jump back to this <laughs> point. So yeah. sorry about kind of no like totally going um, all over the place. But to me, there's a kind of very di direct link to ideas of thresholds because I see those as, uh, at a larger scale, I see the, the, the site uh, and its surroundings as, as major thresholds, mm. I think, of that really kind of talk about right. the disparity that we see uh, within within our cities, but uh, mm. which are so evident with, with the photograph. And I think that that mm. uh, says so much more about kind of, you know, the space within which we practice. Um, and I think that that, uh, yes, you're right. You picked up on, on, on the fact that uh, several of the objects that, that I find uh, repeating themselves within um, my sculptural work are, are um, 
objects that sort of negotiate thresholds. So there will there there's doors, windows, and ladders kind of come up very mm -hmm. frequently because I think that they talk. I mean, I suppose that at a literal level they talk about kind of possibilities, but also about sort of you know transitions between inside and outside, and mm -hmm. uh, a sense of. So while you talked about the the the, the house. Uh, that was a repeating form in, mm -hmm. in the earlier work. Here, the objects are, are uh, remain sort of have come in into these works that, that go inside the house. So that, mm -hmm. in a sense, that domesticity as a, a marker of the larger kind of collective, it still remains. I think it's still mm -hmm. it, it's still underpinned it, except that I've I've removed the 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 form of the house, right. and it's kind of moved on to the objects, and then from the objects, it's distilled further down to spaces of storage and spaces of threshold. So there are shelves and trunks. Mm. Um, and it is always about interiority, belonging, uh, and, and a sense of um, security. But also, mm. this, the, also the, 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 the larger idea about the possibilities that lie mm. beyond. And I think mm. that those possibilities are, are, are it's what is it if not just sort of a collection of possibilities uh, that that a that a home or a neighborhood may be. Nice. So I think that that's and that's what architecture and art, when when fused, I think, does speak to the the potential. Right? We we speak yeah. of potential of a dynamism moving forward yeah. that that allows for different types of collectivity, that allows for different types of occupying space, mm -hmm. um, both as as an inhabitant, but also as a viewer, right? And we are occupying and, and seeing spaces in a very different way now than, say, even two and a half years ago before the pandemic, mm. right? Because for two and a half years, we were, through, we were mediated by a screen or, or by multiple screens and, and so forth. And so if the city, uh, as, as you've described it, it, as a kind of, as a system of screens or as a system of mediated objects, then kind of turns in on itself and becomes an interior. That's what I find in your drawings, in the, in the laser cut drawings, right? That we are occupying that, that in-between space. Um, we are both there and nowhere at the same time. And then the sculpture works actually bring us in. They, they tell us that there is a way to, to interact with or to extend the architecture, right, writ large. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, it, when I was, I was thinking about those photographs of your buildings uh, with, the, with the Hutmans and, and so forth, in the foreground, I was thinking about how say, uh, a shanty, for lack of a better word, or a, or a slum dwelling, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, um, is this collection of primary objects. Yeah. A door, maybe a window, a roof, maybe, right? These are primary elements that um, invoke, speak to, and represent shelter. So when you talk about belonging, in the context of those photographs, I start to ask then, you know, do these forms of architecture belong with each other? And they do uh, in, in, in this context. Anyway, that's... that's um, and ideas uh, of right. home and therefore... Ideas of home, inside, right. You know, they're, they're all yeah. those kind of, you know, conversations that... Yeah. that, um, that a lot of my earlier work has been kind of really... Yeah. was kind of wrestling with for... Yeah. for but you uh, use yeah. the word belonging, which I think is really yeah. important, uh, because from those early works to even these works, the sphere, and we were talking about this earlier as well, that the sphere as a kind of, um, uh, as a unique spatial condition mm. um, ha has multi uh, multiple centers, it has multiple forms of tangency, yeah. Uh, but when that sphere as a form is comprised of all of these singular objects that speak to belonging or speak to threshold, they become something else. And so I wanted to, to reference the, the large work that's in the room uh, here. Mm -hmm. um, 
in which there are collections of various scaled yeah. spheres that are both becoming and unbecoming. They, they are, to me, uh, in process. Yeah. Right? They, they, don't, they don't necessarily gesture to a conclusion, but they're a kind of unfixed reality. And so I was just, I was curious then in the, in the context of, of your understanding of cities, um, do you think that cities are spaces for uh, belonging? Are they, or are they spaces of becoming? And can they work together? Uh, I, I, think, I think that they, they hold the promise for both. Whether they deliver on the promise, it, it depends on, on who you are uh, within the city. It, yet, that, that promise of belonging is, 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 uh, is very seductive, I think. And um, I mean, look, I mean, if we look at sort of migration to cities within, you know, um, within our country, and mm -hmm. you look at this, this is, a lot of it is sort of uh, is informed by the possibilities, the promise, and the belonging, mm -hmm. you know. Um, how that plays out um, is, is, it can be tricky. I think that, you know, I think it can be tricky for, for the urban poor um, because there are many studies on this, which, um, where, where people who know more about this than I do, but, but you know, um, um, those who believe that actually there is no great material difference mm. for those who move to the cities, mm. others who believe that um, the cities actually create certain kind of um, <coughs> playing fields which are filled with sort of opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, there are it, it, it's known to help sort of it, it's known to sort of uh, there are studies that say that you know, women really benefit from moving to cities because mm -hmm. it creates opportunities for them. Mm -hmm. um, but all of this, the move too, is a move away from, from promise towards a promise. Now, mm -hmm. um, how that sort of pans out in a, in a city which kind of then demolishes slums re on a regular basis or where sort of, you know, um, there's a great degree of segregation or where you're removed to certain areas where livelihoods are very tenuous. And I don't know how mm -hmm. that sort of plays out, but that promise is still held. Otherwise, you know, you wouldn't kind of see cities um, e e emerging and evolving in the way that they are, mm. in, a, in a sense. So I think that idea of belonging and promise and mm. is, is, is very, very potent uh, as, a, as a concept. I like it as a, or I liken it to a force. And the reason why I would say it's a force is that so much of your work is also torquing Right? It's torquing, not only in steel, but also in timber, the, the very nature of how we understand, say, a door, for instance, right? and the door that's outside. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that force that is acting upon these, these forms, these objects, these tools, is that of becoming as well. It's interesting that you say that because when the first series of works I I'd named, the, the titles of the works were Jewel, What, and anything to do with force, because it was very much about how, you know, uh, you know our, our societies kind of, you know, bend things mm -hmm. uh, out of shape, yet they remain recognizable in, mm -hmm. in, in their sort of inherent form. And I think a lot of that work has come from there. A lot of their titles, in, in early titles, are very much about, like, the force, and I think now you've talked about that. This idea of the the, the imploding and the exploding simultaneity, simultaneity of both of those actions happening, mm -hmm. um, and that happens with a great deal of force. And right. so, hence, these things start to kind of you know they respond to them, uh, mm -hmm. these forces, and they resist them, right. and then they embrace them. So you know, it's it's series of like very complex ideas, and that's what I was trying to say that you know systems that define cities that are not articulated find sort of a language within the sculptures. Mm -hmm. um, and I think going back to that, I, the, the work with uh, the work called Cloud, which is a series of um, spheres mm -hmm. in some perhaps in process of, you know, closing up and 
others sort of you know um, slowly breaking away. Yeah. Talk about this idea of, of of the sphere, but also that of the shell, yeah. uh, and the shell as uh, as at one level a very rigid um, and strong sort of uh, creation of an enclosure, mm -hmm. uh, at another level also very fragile. Right. Uh, so it sort of plays with that idea, the sphere, and also ideas of time and time cycles and how I think cities sort of, you know, um, get destroyed, parts of them get destroyed, they get re-emerged. And, you know, I'm, well, I'm interested in looking at this over decades, not sort of right. uh, in, in kind of in, in shorter cycles. But, mm -hmm. and then also it, it kind of perhaps you, you can see it as a, as a maybe a ever expanding molecule. I was about to say is, is that they are molecular structures that yeah. um, on one hand, when looked at individually, comprise a world, for instance, but when seen in contrast to each other or seen adjacent to each other, those multiple worlds create multiple frictions that then speak to that production that, you, that you're speaking of. And that production of a world, of a system, of a city, even of an interior, uh, if we think of the interior of, of uh, a body uh, mm. as one in which it's constant balance and constant imbalance, right, uh, is quite fascinating because then we could look at uh, these spaces, these conditions as also bodily, right? Yeah. Um, if I look at these works behind us or even this work here in front of us, what we're looking at not is not necessarily an architecture, but we're looking at bodies that are uh, responding to, but also creating new conditions that uh, we, we, as other bodies in the space, uh, react to. And to me, that also becomes a realm for this, this merging, maybe, uh, of art and architecture, is that uh, while we could define each, right? Yeah. They do actually depend both on, or both of them depend on bodies. Yes. Social bodies, yes. collective bodies, yes. human, mm -hmm. humans, right? Mm -hmm. And that those humans often define, design, and um, reify their meanings, right? So uh, I wanted to, to think about then the relationships that you start to see uh, in these works in particular, um, but you can reference your earlier work, around humans. And the, the de on one hand, the dependence of humans to mm. see, to occupy, to, to view, but then also you've described some of these as, as your kids playing on them, right? They're, they climbed all of them. They climbed all over them, right? Yeah. And this, I love this idea, too, that they could become a kind of playground. Because yeah. I, we were talking about your playground design, which yeah. I love. So could you talk about the, that a little bit? Or just consider yeah, the... Yeah, I'll these. start with, with the earlier point that you'd made, which I, I think about the, the work called Clouds there, which I think plays at this idea of, of uh, sort of shelter at... at Mm. at probably three scales, mm. at, at the individual object that kind of creates um, parts of, 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 of an individual uh, sphere, where it is about the belongings and, and the objects and the thresholds, and then as a singular sphere, and, as, and it grows from there. So it can be read at, at several mm -hmm. uh, scales. And you t talked about this idea of scales, and I think there is some attempt uh, here that subconsciously perhaps uh, that references that it's architectural model making. So I think the works in this, in this show kind of are either, prima either of a very micro scale or, mm. or of a very macro scale. Mm. They almost kind of uh, skip the human uh, scale mm -hmm. deliberately. But that brings me to, the, to your point about like the human interaction with this. And I think that if you, these forces that we talked about uh, within the city, that are kind of constantly interacting with objects. So in a sense, the human body is absent from, from my works, but it is, I hope, sort of uh, very central and sort of present in 
its actions on on the objects in a sense. Mm. So you know mm. when you mm. keep kind of uh, you know pressing against a force constantly and I think that you do it repeatedly over and over and over I think that a certain language is starting to emerge mm, mm. and I think that's really what in a sense what I'm in the midst of doing and like kind of I'm kind of bending it you yeah. know and I'm, I'm playing with it in that sense and it pushes back and then yet new forms sort of emerge out of it and that that in that sense I think uh, it's something we didn't speak about like is is the the presence and the absence of mm. of of the human figure mm -hmm. who is so central to as you said about art and architecture and the, and the city and you know and and to that point i think we were referencing also modernist paradigms mm. uh, from the middle part of the 20th century in which the human didn't really ever exist in the in the representations or if they were, they were abstract, you know, abstracted yeah. figures. Yeah. They had no scale. They didn't even occupy an interior necessarily. And so much of what cities around the world are dealing with is that modernist ethos, if you will, yeah. in which humans had no part except in this kind of top-down authorship. Yeah. But what your work starts to bring forward, I think, is that it also happens from the ground up, and it happens almost in uh, in in contrast to that top-down kind of um, uh, way of thinking or considering mm. building, and and maybe to I'm just thinking out loud here, but maybe your work then as an artist is just about that. If if architecture allows for the possibility of these different scales of working, of thinking, of collaboration, then art production too uh, allows for that, but from a very different yeah. place. Well, I think the, the great problem for our cities here has been that we continue to kind of, you know, we design them from here. Yeah. And in a sense, what uh, what I think might be successful is if the planning was happening from under here, yeah. where the communities were actually uh, empowered to be able to take decisions about neighborhoods, and then you work from neighborhoods to the slightly larger scale. Yeah. And then perhaps what we get is that really crazy, messy, yeah. uh, what planners may call even an ugly city. Yeah. But it would be a it would be a just city. It would be a, a functioning city, mm. and it would be a city that that perhaps sort of you know is is in some form defined by the people mm. for themselves. But it doesn't kind of you know adhere to all all the stuff that we saw happening down the big road, which was kind of you know broad boulevards and kind of you know strange um, bits of uh, sculpture and, mm. and lit up and things. So I think yeah. in a sense almost if architecture was to kind of come here and, and they sort of emerge from, from here, perhaps there are more interesting solutions mm. and conversations that lie uh, rather than this constantly sort of, you know, banging our heads against this idea of the master plan right. uh, and, and imposing it on a reality that no one understands and no one kind of lives. Uh, and it, they don't understand the plan and the plan doesn't understand them and you, yet you kind of can't start They're to force, force thing. Forcing them yeah. to, together. To, to, together and yeah. that creates all of these sort of, you know, the, these kind of spaces that are occupied that are left over after planning. And so I think that th those are kind of interesting things that perhaps, yes, you're right, I think that the traditional practice of architecture is probably top down, and, but maybe that just really needs to change. And maybe Absolutely. for singular dwellings so units or, 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 or singular objects, that may still be all right. But even there, I think there are sort of great sort of uh, conversations to be had about really kind of, you know, shaking this whole thing right. up and saying, you know, guys, it Well, make also sense. questioning yeah. the very ground, uh, like I introduced our conversation, to question the ground mm. is to not only question gravity, which your work does, but also question the very nature of how we occupy that space, how buildings occupy that space, mm -hmm. how the ground begins to generate and uh, inflect value, like we've been talking about. But then potentially, I'm thinking of your of the drawn works. The uh, I keep coming back to these because uh, they're all around us uh, this evening. Yeah. That 
they too have this kind of metaphorical nature of the ground that's been built up and then been incised or carved away. And we're left with um, the kind of afterlife of that carving away where potential lies. Right? They, they have surface, but they don't. They have the embody space, but they don't. Mm -hmm. uh, the more dense uh, drawings that are more kind of crystalline or, or stellar, interstellar, yeah. um, start to suggest that implosion that we've been talking about. But they are all free of the ground, except for the fact that they are carved into a into, ground. And that's the process you're referring right. to as well. Yeah. 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 So. Can you reflect on that a little bit? For on us? the process or on, on, on the form? No, on the drawings, I think. Because um, I, I find them, they are definitely in dialogue with your sculpture, yeah. but they're not necessarily the same as your sculpture in, in format and or meaning. Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, as I said, I mean, I'll just briefly talk about um, the process also. I'm coming back to the idea that I'm using uh, architectural paint uh, to make these, uh, which is fire retardant paint, several layers of it, and then it's kind of um, engraved uh, by laser. So there's this kind of play of burning fire retardant paint that sort of mm -hmm. has other sort of, you know, readings, potential readings into it also. But I think that what I have been trying to explore, and I, I, I would qualify that by saying that I think the potential of what I what I'm seeing here is that this is this is going to be a longer kind of journey with with these series of works, um, as I've you know been discussing with Peter. Um, but I think that what is they are talking to me of sort of you know this this uh, the idea literally of of the brink of kind of this idea that do they pull you into a space where you hmm. kind of get a sense of falling. Mm -hmm in towards a nothingness mm. um, or being sort of thrust out. Uh, so it is, it is the, mm. it's, a, it's those forces, the collective forces, uh, of which I think the sculptures kind of, you know, uh, formally acknowledge at some level, but here it is kind of really, I'm looking at these I I over time. So I think that perhaps the sculptures may be singular in time, whereas these mm. drawings I see as, as more as, moments within a slightly longer narrative. Hmm. And I'd started to explore these first through a series of animations uh, hmm. th that had sort of set these off. Uh, not these particular ones, but, but they did emerge initially as I was trying to kind of grapple with this idea of what happens if you go over the brink, over the edge, or as you hold it. So, you know, that point of um, equilibrium, but it's not a static equilibrium. It's a sort of... Um, it's a dynamic equilibrium, you know, mm -hmm. you're kind of just about to and then you don't and then you yeah. remain within that state. And I think that uh, that's sort of what I've been trying to explore with, with these mm -hmm. paintings and, I, and they've kind of spoken back in some in, in interesting ways, I think. Uh, so for you, they're paintings? Well, I, I mean, the drawings <laughs> more than paintings, well, uh, I think, but I, did, I, I refer to them as paintings. I don't know. I don't, I don't necessarily feel the need to define them beyond sort of okay. um, uh, images that could we call them maps? Maps would be more interesting. I think temporal maps. Temporal maps. Yeah. yeah. I think those, those would be kind of, yeah, I think that's... Because they take, I, I say that only because uh, we were talking about ground or I was talking about the ground and, and the ground is generating different uh, systems of value and uh, that maps too, historically and otherwise, have always been a, a way of, or a mechanism for generating value of inside, yeah. of outside, of who belongs, who doesn't belong, um, if we go on, on that route. But mm -hmm. we also think of the line, the line in space, mm -hmm. as defining so many different conditions of power, so many different conditions of value, that when that line is incised or burnt or cut out, the line starts to take on a different, different meaning as well. Yeah, right. Absolutely, and and even though it's a thin line, as you zoom in further and further, and 
you know, it, it starts to occupy more and more space. Right. Uh, and then it kind of becomes that sort of border between two conditions, whatever yeah. they may or may not be. I mean, uh, so in that sense, I don't know. I mean, in a, in a sense that the spirit of the drawings would, I'd want them to be exactly the opposite of a map. Right. You know, in, exactly. in a sense, I'm yeah. kind of like, I'm, I, I want them to be anti temporal anti-maps. Uh, there for, we are. <laughs> okay, they're temporal anti-maps. <laughs> <laughs> Peter has now left the building. Yes. He can't take <laughs> no, it he anymore. can't take it anymore. All right. So <laughs> I think that, that, that in that sense, I think they're really kind of, I, because I'm questioning ideas of maps, because maps then lead to plans, and plans lead to planning, it, it's almost like, like I, it's, yeah. what, what is a counter to that? Right. You know? um, right. So maybe that's, that's, why I, what, that's why I like the, 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 the dense uh, drawings slash painting slash, what did you call them? Anti-temporal? Temporal anti-maps. Temporal anti-maps. Yes. <laughs> temporal <laughs> anti-maps. We should just go for wall works. Yes. Wall works. Okay. Wall, wall works. works. <laughs> temporal anti-map force diagrams, <laughs> just to add yeah. some engineering uh, into it. So, I mean, they, they become... Uh, they they become diagrammatic in as much as they speak to I think the potential that uh, we've been talking about and and the ways that um, these collective forms when put together they are in a kind of equilibrium but they are also in friction with each other and all of your work is about that friction and that friction of say, a city and a body, or a city and a collective, or a city even in a space, right? Mm -hmm. When we talk about spaces having uh, different scaled boundaries that are either in conversation or not, as the case may be. And so to me, I think there's a, uh, the density of the drawings as much as the density of the sculptures, some you know the larger sculptures, um, really plays on that, and it mm -hmm. plays on on how we understand that we are all in a precarious balance, right? We are all in this kind of this equilibrium, this but tentative equilibrium that you were on the brink. described on the brink. <laughs> but that gets but, me to this yeah. the, a question because. Yeah. The brink, we realized, is a landscape term. Yes. It actually comes it's from... Like a horizon. It's a horizon and a, and a landscape, right? So it's a space of seeing. It's a visual space, crossing but it... Crossing right, so you cross the line, you cross a landscape, oh, between but, a changing and condition. it's a ground. It's a changing condition of a... It's a ground thing. It's a ground thing, yeah. Right. So could you... Where are we on the, on the brink? Are we these days? Well, I don't know. I think that my, my reading, my understanding of it, uh, uh, and I, the, the etymology of it, I thought was kind of more about the threshold, which is what I thought mm. was interesting, that it was a landscape term, but it was the moment of the changing of a landscape from, mm. from, from the plains to a hill or from a cliff to a, I don't know, whatever. Right. That, 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 art to architecture. Or from <laughs> art to architecture. Right? Yeah. That's, Are that, you on the brink? Martin? Constantly. Yeah. I mean, I'm constantly. I mean, that's the only way to be. You're right. I mean, if to to have these conversations, if you don't have that constant friction that right. you talked about, while you precariously sort of you know hold some sort of sense of ground, then um, mm. what's the point and what's the fun? I mean, I think uh, that's that's uh, that's the case. But I think my reading of it, and completely accidentally later, was that it is a moment of the shifting, right? Like from one condition, one landscape condition to another. So perhaps that could be some a filter or a lens that can be applied to to where we constantly are in this mm. sort of, you know, mm. and explosion, explosion. Right. I mean, we're, we're you know, always negotiating. We're always negotiating. Always. Yes, absolutely. It's just kind of, it's just more, uh, it's just that much more present in South Asia mm. and, and in urban South Asia, absolutely. I think, you know, um, uh, which is kind of my zone of practice right uh, but and that's the beauty it's of it heightened as well. and kind of it's it's you know yeah it's on speed absolutely so. mm. well thank you gentlemen um I've been uh, spending a month with this lovely exhibition and from the day one uh, about uh, maybe uh, maybe even a couple months before the show happened uh, Martin had the 
title ready, and I thought it was a wonderful title. Um, I admit I spend too much time on Al Jazeera and BBC, so <laughs> for me the brink is very much on the verge of nuclear, um, perhaps World War III, and certainly um, a world recession. Um, so your dialogue and your, your conversation tonight has certainly uh, made me think of many other brinks um, that we're, we're talking about between art and architecture and the body and the, and, and the building and many, many other. I'd just like to mention I mean, when we talk about claiming the space of unbelonging or feeling, wanting to be by choice on that, on the brink, I mean, these are incredibly privileged positions. To, you have to think about the, the security mm. that you've grown up with in your life mm. that enables you to put yourself into that space of anxiety, unknowing, undefinition. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a great, because most people are in these spaces exactly. not by choice. Yeah. And, it, and it's a terrible, terrible thing for these people. Absolutely. So we're very privileged in that way. So anyway, I think we're on the brink of the dinner hour. <laughs> so I just want to thank everyone for coming, both uh, in, in the space here and in the virtual world. And thank you again, Sean, for, for coming all the way from Ithaca, New York. For, for this opportunity. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.